In this video, we're going to talk about inverse trig functions and why inverse trig functions are restricted to certain areas of the unit circle, certain quadrants. Um, as you see here, I have the three main trig functions, uh, and their inverses here are graphs. So this yellow curve here is the inverse sine, this blue one here is the inverse cosine, and this kind of mustard colored one over here is the inverse tangent. So if you can see here, the inverse sine, in order to maintain its integrity as a function, that means that it must pass the vertical line test. So if I draw a vertical line at any point on that graph, I can never intersect the yellow curve at more than one point. As you can see right here, this passes the vertical line test. But if I didn't stop my function, if I let it uh, sort of continue on and uh, keep going, you can see here now it would fail the vertical line test. It would intersect at two points. So that's the case, or that's the reason that in each one of these uh, situations here, the graph has sort of a, a definite uh, beginning and definite end. It, it, we've restricted the domain here. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that for the inverse sine, we can yield any value given here on the y-axis. So if we take the inverse sine of anything between negative 1 and positive 1, the inverse sine is going to be between uh, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 inclusive, meaning that it could equal negative pi over 2 or equal pi over 2. The cosine is going to have a defined range between these values here. So the cosine of anything between negative 1 and positive 1 is going to have to be between 0 and positive pi. And again, it's going to be inclusive. That's what these brackets here mean. It means it could equal 0 or it could equal pi. For the tangent, this actually continues on forever because the tangent is going to approach uh, these two asymptotes here where it's going to keep getting closer and closer and closer to a positive pi over 2 and closer and closer and closer to a negative pi over 2, but it never actually touches them. So we can actually take the tangent of any value we want. The domain would be all real numbers, but it's always going to yield a value between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, not inclusive, meaning that the tangent, the inverse tangent, can never equal negative pi over 2, and the inverse tangent can never equal positive pi over 2. That's because, well, at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, the tangent would be undefined. So, if we go to the next slide, you're going to see that in this unit circle, I have all of the cosine uh, values in blue, all of the sine values are in red, and these green numbers around the outside, those are the tangent values at each of these points. So, because the sine is restricted to uh, negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, that means that the sine is always going to be somewhere in either the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. It's always going to be somewhere in this purple uh, shaded region here. So the inverse sine is always going to give us a value in that region. The cosine, because the inverse cosine is always going to be between 0 and pi, well, the inverse cosine is always going to give us one of these radian measures here, something in either the first quadrant or the second quadrant. And the inverse tangent, again, like the sine, was between the inverse, uh, sorry, was between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That's, again, going to be somewhere in the first quadrant or somewhere in the fourth quadrant, right? So this, again, would be the tangent. So as we try a few examples here, we can uh, start to practice this a little bit. So let's try taking the inverse sine of pi over 2. Well, basically what this is saying is that the sine of some value theta is going to equal root 2 over 2. Well, there are a couple of values here that the sine of theta equals root 2 over 2. I can see the sine of theta right here equals root 2 over 2, and I can see that the sine of theta over here equals root 2 over 2. So it appears as though I would have answers of positive pi over 4 or positive uh, 3 pi over 4. But since the sine is restricted, remember the sine has to be in the first or fourth quadrant, the only possible answer here is going to be pi over 4. For the second one here, where we have the cosine of uh, negative root 3 over 2, again, we normally would think that there's two places where the cosine uh, 
could equal root three, negative root three over two. It looks like it could be down here at seven pi over six, or it could also be um, up here rather at uh, five pi over six. But remember, since the cosine is rest restricted to the first and second quadrants, that means our only possible answer here would be five pi over six. For the tangent, uh, the inverse tangent of root 3, again, we would think that normally there are two places where the tangent can equal root 3. One would be here and the other would be down here in the third quadrant. But again, since the tangent is restricted to the first and second quadrant, that means that the only possible value here is going to be pi over 3. Um, these arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan, this is just another way of writing the inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. So the arc sine of 1 half literally means the same thing as the inverse sine um, of one half. So if we're going to take the inverse sine of one half and we look in the first and second quadrant, it's going to be right here at pi over six. If we look for the arc cos or the inverse cosine of root two over two, again, it's going to be in the first and second quadrant. So, oops, let me get rid of that straight mark there. It's going to be uh, right here at pi over four. And the arctan, or the inverse tangent of 1, is going to be right here in the first quadrant at also pi over 4. So this is kind of how we can use uh, our knowledge of the unit circle and use our knowledge of our restricted domains here to figure out you know, what each of these values is going to be. It's why we only get one value and not necessarily two uh, or more. A couple of other rules we might have are the uh, when we have compositions here where we have the sine of the inverse sine of x or the inverse sine of the sine of x both of those will equal x as long as x is within these uh, restricted domains here so if I take the inverse sine of x and then the sine of x as long as x started with something between negative 1 and positive 1 um, those are just going to cancel out and equal x same thing down here with the cosine if I have the cosine of the inverse cosine of x that will equal x so long as x began between negative 1 and 1 um, and again that's because the cosine of anything you know can't be uh, more than 1 or less than negative 1 if I take the inverse cosine of the cosine of x that will equal x as long as I'm between 0 and pi and uh, the tangent here is the only one that's a little bit different um, I can take the inverse tangent of anything so that means that I can take the tangent of anything because uh, this will be defined for all of x. The only time the tangent is undefined is at pi over 2 or uh, 3 pi over 2. But if I'm taking the inverse tangent, I can literally take the inverse tangent of any number. This here uh, is defined for everything. Um, this will equal x as long as we start with a number that's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 non-inclusive. So let's try uh, something that's not within one of these boundaries here. These boundaries here are, are, are great shortcuts when we have them, but if they fall outside that parameter, they're not going to help us too much. So let's get rid of this for a second. And let's say we tried to take um, the inverse sine of the sine of 5 pi over 4. Now this is not just going to equal 5 pi over 4 because 5 pi over 4 is not between the restricted domain between negative uh, 2 pi and 2 pi. So since that's outside that domain we have to kind of go through step by step. So really all I'm going to do is figure out well what's what's this piece here going to be? If I can figure out what that is I can just sort of work my way backwards. So the sine of 5 pi over 4, well, that's just going to be right over here. The sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. So really all I'm doing is taking the inverse sine of negative root 2 over 2. Well, this looks like what we just did a second ago, and the inverse sine of negative root 2 over 2 is actually going to be down here. All right, it's got to be either the first or the fourth quadrant. So since it has to be between negative, two, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, I'm going to actually take this distance right there, which would be a negative pi over 4. So this is actually going to equal a negative pi over 4. So if I, if I end up with a problem where it falls outside of the parameters, I just sort of work my way from the inside out. Let's try another one. Let's say we wanted to do the cosine. Uh, oops, that's kind of a little messy there. 
we'll do the cosine of the inverse cosine. Computer's kind of screwing up here a little bit. Inverse cosine of, uh, let's say, a negative root 3 over 2. So if we're going to take uh, the inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2, um, again, we got to make sure it falls within the parameter. So this one here, as long as it's between negative 1 and positive 1, this is actually going to cancel out, right? So this is just going to be, this is between negative 1 and positive 1. This is just going to give us a negative root 3 over 2. All right. Uh, I hope this kind of clarifies things a little bit. If uh, you have any questions, come see me in class. Thanks.